At the dawn of time, long before civilization and the multiverse as we know it today, there is an entity, a concept, a force of nature more than a physical creature. Moving in between the worlds, it is the progenitor of all dragon kind everywhere. It is the Ur Dragon. The Ur Dragon had been a concept in the game's lore long before finally receiving a card in the Commander 2017 product. It is, besides many other things, the parent, or maybe more precisely, the creator of the Elder Dragons of Dominaria, including the Planeswalker Nicol Bolas. So, when the main focus of the 2017 Commander decks became the four distinct creature types, there was no better option for the Dragon deck's face card than this ancient being. But how exactly do you tackle creating a card for something like that? Well, the answer is actually pretty obvious. Let's start with the mana cost. Dragons all across the multiverse come in all five colors of mana, so their progenitor has to be five colors. But it can't just cost five mana, that thing is enormous, and casting it should dramatically alter the course of the game. Let's make it nine, not so absurdly high as ten, but not so achievable as eight. The creature type of dragon avatar pretty much writes itself, so let's move on to the text box. It's a dragon, so naturally it has flying, it's a 10-10, the biggest of all magic dragons, and now for some big and splashy abilities for that mana investment. As the progenitor of all dragon kind, it could create dragon tokens, but to be fair that sounds a bit too basic. So instead, it will decrease the cost of your dragons. But wait, that's a bit redundant after paying 9 mana for it, isn't it? Welcome. Eminence. Eminence is the new commander-focused mechanic of this set. The mechanic that would go down in history as one of the most broken and controversial. Eminence basically lets you play a different game than your opponents, since you get to start with a benefit almost akin to an emblem. But in defense of the Ur Dragon, it is the one card the ability thematically fits best and it's almost perfect. The Ur-Dragon, the mythical draconic avatar that lives outside the bounds of reality and affects the many planes of existence by flapping its incomprehensible wings. Here, we see it doing just that, existing outside of reality, yet affecting the material world as well, with a very fitting effect. The other good thing is that dragons are generally very expensive. At least they used to be, thanks Baldur's Gate. So the benefit you get is not as explosive as it would be with other creature types. One thing that might have been a bit more flavorful is if it discounted all dragon spells, not just your own. Anyways, lastly, the big payoff for finally casting the beast. It obviously cares about dragons, so it draws you cards when they attack. And then to demonstrate the insane power of this entity, you may just conjure anything from your hand right onto the battlefield too. That should do the trick. And there it is, the ultimate dragon card. There's just one problem with it. You see, the design is almost too obvious. Making a card like this feels almost too easy and accurately represents the deck building aspect as well. The deck isn't dragons doing this or dragons doing that, it's dragons, all of them. Just any dragons being good because dragons are good. The Ur Dragon isn't the best dragon commander for any 
nuanced reason or subtle design choices, but because it just is. And with that, I'm almost wondering whether an Ur Dragon card was necessary in the first place. It could have remained similar to Gaia, a mysterious and mighty deity that remains hidden behind a thick veil of folk tales. I mean, why would you want to play Jund Dragons or Ragdos Dragons or even Mono Red Dragons if you can have all the dragons? In my opinion, five color cards and Commander specifically are at their best when they focus on broader game concepts, such as color, like Ramos or the two Carthalians, or playing different spells like Joda, Garth or niv Reborn. And while I have to give the Ur Dragon credit for doing that at least somewhat, it also does it while limiting itself to a very narrow selection of cards. Before we conclude though, I need to take a minute to talk about the art. Jamie Jones did a fantastic job on this piece that encapsulates the essence of the Ur Dragon beautifully. The art perfectly fits a five-colored card without being too on the nose. It manages to achieve a great sense of scale, even without seeing the ground almost at all, thanks to the perspective and the other dragons flying around. We know dragons are big, even if they don't exist in real life, and something that dwarfs them in comparison like this just awakens a feeling of awe. The colorful view of the universe in the background is the ultimate finishing touch. We are anywhere and everywhere. We sense the true nature of the Ur Dragon. Now, to finally conclude, oftentimes popularity comes from convenience. The easy and the obvious is more appealing to the masses and that just about rightfully pushes this commander to the spot of the second most popular. That being said, I think the design of the Ur Dragon's card is really good. It is the perfect representation of the being, and it couldn't have ended up any other way. It just leaves me to ponder if the Ur Dragon should have ever been portrayed in card form at all. Hello unscripted epilogue time. Uh, this is my second video of the top commanders design uh, series. Hopefully it becomes a proper series in the future. Uh, let me know what you thought. I'm really interested this time around because I have been a bit more critical this time uh, than in the Atraxa video. Uh, dragons are obviously a very uh, popular fantasy creature in general, so that also has something to do with uh, the this card's popularity, uh, definitely. But uh, yeah, I think I explained my thoughts on the card in the video pretty well. So let's discuss, and until the next video, uh, goodbye!